Hi there, I'm Naruto Hyuga, and this is my story, Believe It! What's up ladies and gentlemen, Neon Pao here, and today we have another part to What If Naruto Was A Hyuga. Now guys, I will apologize for the delay to this part, however I appreciate all you beasts for giving me so much support and understanding life can really hit you like a bus out of nowhere. But back to the video, what we're gonna do for this video is try to hit that 100 like goal again, which I know you beasts should easily be able to knock out, you guys have had no problems with it at all. And I also want to mention that what if Deku video will be coming out really really soon, so make sure to keep an eye out for that one. Without further ado guys, let's go ahead and jump into the video. We last left our young Hyuga finding out from the masked man that Killer B, his master and his friend, has been captured and killed. During this time, all the Kage had made the decision to unite under the Shinobi Alliance to stop the masked man. The build up to the war with Gata giving his speech still plays the same. We now progress to our story. Team 7 knows that they will need to get some crazy new games if they hope to stand a chance against the masked man and defeat him. Personally, Naruto was the most eager to fight the villain because he had lost two people very close to him due to that man. However, Naruto realized that Jiraiya and Killer B would not want him to fight with malice and revenge in mind. He needs to clear his thoughts. This leads Team 7 to split up once again. They all agree to follow their own path to get stronger and meet up before the battle begins, so they can prepare their new strengths and build formations. Sasuke, at this point, has full access to his Eternal Mangeku Sharingan abilities and is working on advancing his Susanoo. He goes to train with Kakashi Sensei since he has the most experience with the Sharingan abilities. Hirata goes back to the Hyuga clan and actually trains with Neji so both of them can get stronger and evolve their moves. Naruto on the other hand has decided to just focus on meditating. He knows that physically he is ready for his fight but his mental prowess still needs to be hardened. A few weeks pass and it is almost time for the battle to begin. The Shonobi Alliance has built up quite nicely. They have set up the HQ and the forces from all the villages including the samurai. Sasuke has learned to access his full Susano with a bit of strain of course, as he is still getting used to it. Hinata and Neji have also evolved quite a lot as well. Their technique and power of their jutsus have gotten much stronger. Both Sasuke and Hinata have also been able to increase their efficiency in Sage Mode. However, for Naruto, things have been much more different. He was successful with his meditation, which helped clear his mind, but with so much meditation, he came in contact with the Ninetales, Kuruma. During Naruto's meditation, Kuruma actually reached out to him to talk. As the time progressed between both of them, Naruto realized that if he would ever hope to bring true peace to the world, he would need to befriend the creature filled with the most hatred. It wasn't an easy task, but Naruto eventually got to Kuruma, and they actually exchanged conversations and began bonding. This early growth between the two was definitely in part to Kuruma seeing his how powerful Naruto had gotten in such a short time, and that he too started believing in the young Hyuga. It was as if the kid actually could make the things he said come true. By the end of Naruto's mental training, Kuruma agreed to let Naruto have access to his chakra without any drawback. This of course didn't mean they were buddy buddy best friends yet, but just close partners sharing the same body. Due to Naruto having access to all of the Ninetales chakra, something inside of him awoke. It was as if some hidden ancestral power blew out of him. When he attempted to get into his QB state, instead of being just orange, his entire body was teal, almost bluish, with an orange aura. Naruto nor Kurama had a clue why the change in color had happened. Maybe they would figure it out in due time. However, what they did know was that this new power was beyond insane. It put the old form to shame. Naruto is more powerful and faster than before. Naruto believes that with his new power and chakra capacity of his new form, he could also use his flying Garajin and Byakugan in combination 
which would allow him to cover a very large area of the battlefield. He finally meets up with Hinata and Sasuke so they can see how well their training has gone. They're all proud of each other for working so hard. Hinata is especially proud of Naruto and Sasuke for unlocking and enhancing these crazy new forms. However, even though all seems good with our protagonist, the enemy has not been sitting around this entire time. The masked man has actually come in contact with Kabuto. This means that the reanimation ninjas will be joining the army as well. This will definitely catch the shinobi forces off guard since they did not imagine this possibility. Kabuto of course shows his dominance to the masked man by showing that he has the power of the real Madara Uchiha. So yes, that all happens. It is now the day of the war. Naruto will be sticking with his other Team 7 members and leading the forces to fight the main branch against the masked man. However, Naruto with his power is able to make enough clones of himself to send to each battlefield. This greatly increases the shinobi's morale and power rating. Each fight in each battle region happens much the same as in canon. However, as we follow Hinata, Naruto, and Sasuke to the main battlefield, they come into contact with some old friends. Sadly, this reunion isn't a happy one. Team 7 intersects with the reanimated Nagato and Itachi. The fight between these two groups gets very tense. Naruto realizes that if Nagato is in front of him, that is because he died by the masked man's hands. Also, Sasuke is just in complete shock and is frozen at the sight of his brother. Nagato and Tachi can't control their bodies, so they immediately attack Team 7. Team 7 goes on a defensive. They don't want to fight, but they can't stay on the defensive the entire time. Itachi speaks up and says, You cannot afford to hold back on us, especially you, younger brother. Nagato agrees with Itachi. Naruto and Sasuke take a big gulp and start to unleash their true strength on the undead. Nagato and Itachi are astonished by the sheer power these two have mustered since the last time. They seem like completely different shinobi. Hinata is doing her best to slow down Nagato and Itachi and support her comrades. Even with the immense strength of Naruto, Hinata, and Sasuke all combined, they are facing two of the strongest ninja in history and are having some trouble taking them down. As the fight is progressing and they fight toe to toe, Itachi tells Naruto that his body is about to unleash his Tsukuyomi and he needs him to look at him. Naruto is hesitant, but Sasuke yells at Naruto to just trust his brother and then Naruto looks into Itachi's eyes. Something unexpected happens. Naruto begins to throw up a bird and it uses a visual jutsu on Itachi which frees him from Kabuto's grasp. Believe it or not, Itachi had a suspicion about Kabuto and that he would try to reanimate him. He made a countermeasure for that very thing through Naruto and Sushui's eye. Itachi then turns to Nagato and uses his Tsukuyomi to unleash the reanimation on him before he can cause any more damage. Team 7 is speechless, but glad they can stop fighting these two. Nagato and Naruto still have the heartfelt interaction between each other before Nagato vanishes. Itachi then tells Team 7 his plan to stop all the reanimation by going to Kabuto. He also tells them that they should hurry and get to the battlefield. Hinata and Naruto agree that they should, but Sasuke just stands there for a second. He then tells the other two that he will catch up with them, and that he wants to go with Itachi to help defeat Kabuto. Sasuke, expecting Itachi to refuse, is surprised to see Itachi smile and say that his help will be much appreciated. Naruto gives Sasuke a thumbs up and the two teams split up. Hinata and Naruto finally get to the battlefield and things aren't looking too good. A ton of the white Zetsus and reanimated Shinobi are present there. On top of the white Zetsu disguising as Shinobi, the Shinobi forces are being thinned out quickly. With Naruto's power, he starts wiping out the majority of the white Zetsus and the imposters. Hinata is slowing down the reanimated ninjas. Once the chaos clears and everything seems to have calmed down a bit, the masked man shows up with a legion of the past Chinchuriki. The masked man even looks different and now possesses one of the Renegon. Naruto and Hinata are left to fight these very powerful opponents so that the rest of the shinobi forces can focus on the Zetsus. We now move on to another battlefield where the five Kage are. This battlefield has been very successful for obvious reasons, however the tide of battle is about to quickly change. An unfamiliar reanimated ninja appears in the distance. Everyone is on guard to fight and seal this new enemy, but to their surprise they are getting completely slaughtered. 
this enemy is taking the shinobi forces as if they were all just bugs, and he was just squishing them. It wasn't until the Naruto Kolod and the five Kage stepped in that the villain finally stopped. In a matter of what seemed like seconds, half of the shinobi forces were completely wiped out. The mysterious ninja steps back and introduces himself as Madara Uchiha. This sends a full shockwave to the remaining ninja forces and to the five Kage and Naruto clone present there. They thought Madara was on the other battlefield. This makes them question everything they know. The five Kage and Naruto clone know that normal ninjas can't handle this battle, so they separate Madara from the rest of the group and fight him alone. The rest of the forces are left to fight whatever Zetsu army and reanimating ninjas are left. We now return to the battlefield where Hinata and the real Naruto are at. Hinata, Naruto, and the rest of the shinobi forces were able to seal all the reanimated Trinchuriki, and now they are left to face off the masked man. Naruto is tired of the villain's chaotic ways and wants to put a stop to him. He especially wants to take the cursed mask off of him and see who he actually is. Naruto, by this point, has figured out the kinks of how the masked man's ability works. By using his advanced sensory abilities, he devises a plan where he will be able to land a solid hit on the enemy. Plus, he will use the fact that the masked man still wants to capture the Ninetales to his advantage. He tells this to Hinata. Hinata is a bit skeptical at first in just using Naruto as bait, but she trusts his judgment in this situation. Hinata starts off the plan by attacking the masked man with her new infinite palm jutsu. A jutsu that releases an almost infinite like amount of blows against the enemy. This of course doesn't do any damage to the masked man, but it does distract his view from Naruto. Hinata stops her attack and Naruto jumps from behind her with his Rasengan. The masked man smirks as he watches Naruto just go right through him. He's about to grab Naruto to suck him away, but at the very second of contact, Naruto disappears and teleports above the masked man. What the masked man didn't realize is that before Naruto started running, he had thrown a kunai with his flying raiji marking, similar to how Minato did it in the past. The masked man is too slow and too shocked to react, and Naruto lays down a rosin shuriken on top of him. It connects, and at the same time, Naruto sets a flying raijin seal on the masked man's back. Once the dust and rubble clear, the masked man is torn to shreds and is no longer the masked man. He is still alive, but he has taken a massive amount of damage, and has lost one of his arms. If it wasn't for the power of the Rinnegan, the last blow would have vaporized him. Also, during this time, Kakashi and Gai arrive at the main battlefield and meet up with Naruto. The entire group finally sees the identity of the villain before them. No one has any idea who this guy is. That is, everyone but Kakashi. Everyone asks Kakashi who that person is. Kakashi, who is still in shock, responds, that ninja before him is Obito Uchiha, his old comrade who had died many years ago. Obito is just laughing. Everyone looks at him. Obito then says to Kakashi that he is right. Obito Uchiha did die all those years ago. He isn't that person anymore. He gives his backstory to the group and tells them the truth of his motives. As the two parties are interacting, they hear a deep and menacing voice from the background. It's the real Madara Uchiha, and he looks like he's holding Kara's body. He was tired of waiting for Obito, so he decided to take things in his own hands. What happened to the other four Kage, and what will happen to the team now that they have to face the strongest ninja in history? Also, what could possibly be taking Itachi and Sasuke so long? All these questions will be answered in the finale to What If Naruto Was a Hyuga. And that's where we're going to be leaving part 7 to What If Naruto Was a Hyuga. So guys, I want to thank all of you again for the massive support, and I really appreciate it, and I really hope you guys are enjoying the content. Also, make sure to smash the like button to demolish that 100 like goal. Also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the fresh videos, and there's going to be a lot of videos coming out really soon. So guys, without further ado, until next time, peace out.